pizza is about umami. Everything about a pizza is sort of soaked in umami. Tomatoes, cheese, yeasty flavors, you're building this umami bomb. And that's why we all love pizza, because we all love delicious. I'm not traditionally trained as a pizzaiolo, as a pizza maker. I've been a professional chef here in New York City for the last 32 years. I was in fine dining for a really long time, and then casual dining, and I was in the donut business. And I'm looking at pizza through a slightly different lens than some of the more traditional pizza makers here in the city. We don't have any of the constraints that maybe some people that want to be more traditional and more classical have. The sky's the limit here. Cooks come to me with an idea, say, let's try it. Let's have some fun here, guys. So this is our dough room. The process starts with our biga. The biga is similar to a sourdough starter. You ferment uh, th these group of ingredients, you let them get to a certain point, and then you take most of it, you leave some behind, you add it to your, your, your pizza dough, you mix it, and then you keep that little bit alive and it can live for centuries, in, in fact. But what happens with our biga is you mix it and you use it all. And then you start again the next day and mix more and use it all. And so there's nothing left. So you can see like this is all that fermentation, all that activity, all those bubbles in there, all that structure is happening. Really has some good wake you up funk. Our dough guru, Jimmy makes our dough five days a week here. We put our biga in here from the mixing bowl. It's water, olive oil, flour, some more yeast, some more salt, some sugar, some diastatic malt. It's all going in there and it's gonna get mixed up. We have a chart right here. This has got every pizza dough recipe, every batch since the day, first day we opened. Keeping track of the temperatures is really, for us, very important and fundamental to monitoring the dough, being consistent with our dough. To do something well, you have to understand what's at play. And that involves really trying to be analytical about the dough and what can we do to make better dough and never being satisfied with the dough that we're making. We don't go to what they call full window pane where you could really, really, really stretch this thinly without it breaking because we want the gluten to develop over time as we put it in the cooler over the next four days. And then we drop a specific amount of dough into the divider. I'm gonna turn the dough out. He's gonna you know, press it evenly into the corners. And the dough is cut into 30 equal size squares. From there, we confirm the weight to make sure it's accurate. And from there, it goes into the rounder. This one saves us some time. Once he gets a couple of trays, he'll roll them into the cooler. And then that's where they'll spend the next three, four, five days. I mean, we're always trying to make better pizza tomorrow than we did yesterday. I don't know that that's the bumper sticker that we're gonna put you know, on the website, but that is our ultimate goal. And obviously that's where it starts, right? Pizza starts with the dough and from there, uh, we can do all sorts of fun stuff. We do a square pie. So we take our pizza dough, we make a larger ball of it. Then we stretch it into a Sicilian pan. We leave it out for 18 to 20 hours till it's proofed nicely. And then we bake it in the deck oven. So these are our square pies. They've been resting and proofing and uh, now we're gonna blind bake them. If you pull up too fast, the dough will go with the lid and then you catch these air bubbles under the dough and then rather than getting contact and getting a nice crispy bottom, you have these pockets that are no good. So these are gonna go in actually at 475 for about 20 minutes. What I love about uh, our square is that to me it has this like Stouffer's French bread pizza vibe. It's like a brioche and a focaccia went on a date. These have been in for about 18, 20 minutes. You can see they're nice and light, golden brown. This is what we're looking for in our squares. They got some nice height. These have now been baked, and then we lay down some sliced cheese, then some of our house sauce, then some shredded cheese, etzo cupping pepperonis. We give them a second bake, and then after that, they'll sit here, and as soon as they get in order, we'll give them a quick flash and finish them with a little bit of 30-month-aged parm, send them on their merry way. We're gonna start meatball prep. This is for the pull-apart meatball sliders and our meatball marinara as well. So it's a 50-50 pork beef meatball. They're both 80-20 blends of meat to fat, and we're gonna then mix that with some grated onions, some eggs, some cheese, some nutritional yeast, some MSG, some Ritz crackers. You know, breadcrumbs are a very common ingredient, but Ritz cracker is the Parmesan of cracker. It is the king of crackers, right? It is the ultimate cracker. So uh, we just felt like it was a little bit of an improvement upon the standard breadcrumb. Well, I'm basically looking at the bottom of the bowl, trying to make sure that any Ritz crackers parm is fully incorporated in there. As soon as I see that, I'm gonna turn it off because you don't want to overwork the meat. It gets all bouncy and tough. Then we're gonna weigh them out and ball them. 
We weigh them out to about 50 grams. We can fit 70 meatballs on one tray. I love the meatball parm. I mean, we call it meatball marinara. I think it's cool that we have parts of the menu that are different, you wouldn't see at a pizza place, kind of out there, crazy ideas. I mean, that's kind of chef's specialty, and then you're always gonna find classics that you'd find at pizza places, and I think that's a cool combination. So these are all done, we're gonna bake them off, and then they're gonna be ready for service. We were excited to put sliders on the menu. Our meatball is maybe not classic Italian and maybe more Swedish leaning, but we're still trying to be respectful of the art of making meatballs and we put it on a delicious bun and some delicious Wisconsin brick cheese that melts really well and, and makes for, a, we hope, a delicious, fun way to have it. It's pull apart and it's like a pizza shop staple. So we see stuff like that as not only an obligation, but an opportunity, a place where we can have fun, where we can make something delicious, make something that's hopefully best in class, but also a little whimsical, a little bit fun. So this is Olga. She's uh, officially the world's greatest prep cook. She's the heart and soul of the basements. She'll cut off all these mushrooms that we slice and we serve raw with some butter lettuce and some radicchio, some sliced raw onion. And then we have our Old Town Pizza, which is a, a riff on a classic, the Old Town Bar and Grill, which is nearby. And I have a lot of personal connection to. The Old Town is based off of a sandwich at the Old Town Bar. It's been a famous classic New York institution. They have this sandwich, it's a grilled cheese sandwich on pumpernickel bread with sauteed mushrooms and mustard cheese. And it's just super delicious. And I thought it'd be fun to make a pie out of it. We use New York as our inspiration a lot. I use my past, my culinary history, but I also like to use New York City as an opportunity for a place to, to find inspiration. We're aspiring to make a New York style pizza and classically uh, a New York pie is, is, is 18 to 20 inches roughly and it's baked once, taken out, cut into slices and then when you order your slice, slices they're refired. We've spent a decent amount of time trying to figure out is how we can get that twice baked pie on a single bake because we don't have the luxury of pre-making pizzas and hoping people come in and order those. We got to the point where we realized we couldn't bake the pie for its entire life cycle at a single temperature. And so we began splitting time between a higher and a lower temperature. And we've been tweaking it quite a bit. But for the last couple of months, we've been at around 620 for half the time and 535 for the other half of the time. And what that ideally yields us is a pie that feels like that New York slice that's baked twice. Our tomato sauce is straight down the fairway. It's not too sweet. This is the base for all of our red pies, square or round. This isn't a crazy, crazy, crazy recipe. And we're just adding some really nice dried oregano, some dried garlic, a bunch of olive oil, and some soy sauce, actually. We put soy in there because we think that pizza is about umami. So we're pulling the eggplant out of the oven. It's ready to get peeled and then smoked. And then that becomes the sauce for our Odd Father pizza. So the Odd Father is, is one of our earliest pies. It gets its name from like classic Italian flavors. It's zucchini and eggplants, garlic. It reminds me of the Goodfellas scene, you know, the guys in the prison slicing the garlic. But we take eggplant and we, we roast it in the deck and then we smoke it. So you can see we're filling it up nicely. You can see why we wrapped it pretty tight. We don't want any smoke to come out because that's just flavor loss. Yeah, that just sits there yeah. until yeah. you can't see the smoke anymore and then it's ready to blend. We take a garlic confit that we blend in with the smoked eggplant and make a sauce. So we lay down some shredded mozz, then we lay down some of that nice smoked eggplant cream. We put down the zucchini, drizzle it with some oil, and we bake that. And when it comes out, give it a little bit of crunch because everything's kind of soft. We want to give it some texture. So we take tempura crumbs, finish it with some fresh parsley, some really beautifully 30 month aged Parm, more olive oil, and that's our odd father. We are here with a national treasure. Scott Wiener from Scott's Pizza Tours, probably America's greatest resource on all things pizza. Among his great, vast knowledge, the largest single collection of pizza boxes. We take people around pizzerias, tours of kitchens, explanations of dough process, tomato selection, cheese preparation, history, science, culture, everything. And I stumbled on this fact that said something about how two thirds of the three billion pizzas eaten every year in the United States are 
served out of a box. And I just started saving interesting boxes that I saw, and that turned into having a few hundred of them, which turned into writing a book about them, which turned into a Guinness World Record, which turned into Chef Dufresne calling me up and saying, can I put some of them on the wall? And me saying, yeah, I don't have room in my apartment, take them all. <laughs> These are all generic boxes from all over the world. There's 19 boxes, and I think it represents 12 or 13 different countries. What pie are you into lately? Yeah. Maybe let's do the Redding. The Redding? That pie. Yeah. The Redding is another one of our pies, and it takes its inspiration from another sandwich, a classic Philly sandwich. The Redding Terminal Nix is like a roast pork and a jus, and you get it on a proper Italian sandwich. And it starts with a roast pork that we rub with a bunch of dried spices, and we roast it in the oven, cool it, slice it on the slicer. We lay some grated provolone down, then we lay the pork down, then we take some broccolini that we blanch and saute real hard with a bunch of chili flakes and we chop that all up. And then we bake that off in the oven, finish that with a house-made chili oil and a little, again, some shaved corn. We send that out. It's pretty awesome. So, enjoy. It smells freaking great. When I first look at a pizza, the visual impact is always interesting to see. A balance of topping, this is an even browning. It's not like a super hot flash bake. It's very common right now to see post oven parm. You also get this nice visual. It's like this freshly fallen snow. It's pretty nice. Next thing you do is I look at the cross section just to see what's going on. Nice big open crumb structure, like big bubblage, which is just a sign of full fermentation. I love a pizza like this because it's um it's essentially a roast pork sandwich pizza. But when you eat it, you don't think Oh, well, this is one food on top of another food. It, it really is owned by the pizza. So this is our stretch sauce. It goes with our chicken fries as well as the dipping sauces for our crust. And we offer five dipping sauces that you can order on the side in an effort to reduce the boneyard that builds up on the plate. We would like people to eat the crust. The base of the sauce is actually just a little bit of our white sauce, which is based around the classic halal cart sauce that you'll get on the corner. Then we got the roasted red peppers, a little bit of Calabrian chili, some maple syrup, my favorite ingredient. Then we got some garlic powder, some salt, and that's just gonna get blended. First time here with us? Yeah. You can get a veg and a meat, you can get a square and a round, hopefully a lot of choices. The name stretch, it serves a number of functions. When I started making pizza, I realized that I could make this beautiful dough, beautiful dough, and completely screw it up by not stretching it right. I could go to all the trouble, I could waste four days worth of work because I couldn't stretch the damn thing correctly. And it became really important to me to get good at it. Making great pizza is not easy by any stretch of the imagination, and it takes incredible dedication and hard work. And I wanted to focus a little of that on there. And then of course, there's the notion that we're trying to stretch a little bit of the possibilities, stretch a little bit of the opportunities, stretch the way you could think about a pizzeria, about a pizza, about what you could do. You know, we want to have a little bit of fun. We want to be a little bit of playful. We want to stretch the possibilities. New York is full of great pizza. And what I want is I want people to say, we're gonna come back to New York for another pizza tour and we cannot miss Stretch. We gotta go to Stretch. And say like, I gotta put this on my list next time I'm in town. Like, when I think about pizza in New York City, Stretch is on the list.